Some of you might be wondering what oil you should be using in your vehicle. Um, I realize now I am kind of treading into some very, wading into some very turbulent waters. There are people who are extremely opinionated and really geek out, and I mean geek out in, you know, positive term, um, on oil. And there's people who just don't even know that engines take oil. They don't know that you change them on a regular basis. It's a miracle that the car is still driving. So in between there are, you know, most people, and they just want to do right by their car. They just want their car to last a long time, um, you know, but they don't want to spend a ton of money. Uh, you know, they just want the best value and, um, you know, get a, a good performance out of the oil. And there are those, you know, future oil nerds who, you know, again, using the term in a very positive way, um, you know, who eventually will will go off and and uh, really get into it and understanding oil and what oil to use and all that jazz and more power to you. Um, so I'm kind of geared as if this is like a primer. So this will kind of give direction for the lay person, you know, what they want to do. And then maybe as a primer for those people who want to really start getting into the nitty gritty of oil and what makes some oil better than others and, and all that jazz. Um, if you like this video, so I just want to, before I get too further, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you want to see random stuff like this. I have a very random channel, eclectic channel. Uh, if you have any questions or you know, cr constructive criticism, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them when I can. Everything helps support the channel. Definitely appreciate it. So what, uh, let's talk about, get back to oil. There's basically three types of oil. There's your conventional oil, your synthetic blend, and a full synthetic. I think before we kind of tell you what the right one is, let me give you a background of what the different types are. So conventional oil is basically, they pump the oil out of the ground. Uh, it goes into a refinery. There's a, a distillation process there in which they break up the oil into its uh, constituent parts. So, you know, it's, uh, you get gasoline and diesel, kerosene, uh, mineral oil, grease, um, tar, all that kind of gets broken out of the, the crude oil. And in there somewhere is uh, the viscosity that they grab is, uh, is becomes engine oil. And it's essentially, you know, just purified crude oil. They, they throw some other stuff in there, some additives to help it just perform better um, than just as a plain oil by itself. Actually, older engines, I believe, actually did run just mineral oil, if I remember correctly. But uh, the newer engines uh, oils are just going to be are going to be better than anything from you know 170 years ago 50 years ago 20 years ago uh, they're just the processes are better they're just better able to to purify the oil they're going to have better additives um, and then uh, uh, in addition to that just the engineering of the engine has become has has improved so conventional motor oils are going to far superior than what we've had before on the other end of the spectrum you have full synthetic. Now the full synthetic still uses crude oil or oil as a base, but then uh, it goes through an additional process in which they build up um, the oil molecules and they become very uh, uniform. And um, with that uniformity, you get kind of two main um, improvements. One is it becomes more slippery. The viscosity doesn't change. Like the viscosity is going to be, you know, if you're, you're, you're you know, 20 weight oil, uh, conventional synthetic, the viscosity is going to be the same, but kind of like the slipperiness of it or the lubrication quality of them is going to be improved with the full synthetic. And then additionally, the full synthetic is just going to um, tolerate heat a lot better. It's just going to um, be more robust. It's just going to last longer. The oil isn't going to break down as readily as conventional oil. So, uh, but because it goes through that additional process, um, it's more expensive. Duh, okay, you know, that seems pretty straightforward. Now, in between those two is the synthetic blend. Um, now, that seems like, wow, that seems like the best one, right? Because you get kind of get like the, it's a lower cost than the full synthetic because you have a conventional oil mixed in, but you get a lot of the, you still get a lot of the properties of the, the full synthetic oil. So you get the slipperiness and the, the you know, the longevity and such. That seems like the best of both worlds. Now, the one downside with full, uh, the synthetic blend is that there is no regulation saying how much 
conventional oil to synthetic oil, mix it together to make it a synthetic blend. There's no minimum requirement. Theoretically, take a 55 gallon drum, put in a dropper of full synthetic oil and be like, yep, oh, synthetic blend, ready to go, ship it. Now, I might be an optimist, but um, I don't think that, you know, at least most companies are gonna take advantage of the consumer and be like, all right, I'm just gonna add a little dropper of full synthetic and then ship that bad boy and, uh, and you know, mark it up five bucks. Uh, I think because of competition, I mean, I'm not completely um, a laissez-faire capitalist, but, you know, I think, you know, they would kind of eviscerate each other if, you know, they could test and figure out how much percentage is synthetic versus conventional. Maybe they're all conspiring together to only... Regardless, I think in general, if you go with a decent brand, you're going to get a good performing oil, even if they don't tell you how much full synthetics actually in the oil. Regardless, um, let's go on to, so now let's talk about what oil is, should you be using? Um, I think there's a few key metrics here that can help you decide which would be the most appropriate one. Um, so first and foremost, I would say is, what did the car come with originally? So if it's conventional oil, it should be fine running conventional oil. If it's full synthetic, stick with full synthetic. If it's a newer car, you're okay putting full synthetic into a engine that is normally run conventional oil. That is not necessarily true for older cars. And by older, there's no hard and fast rule, but I would say any car that's 20 years old or more, um, you know, kind of borderline 20 years is kind of like the gray area. I think it kind of starts getting fuzzy around there. Um, cars that weren't designed to run full synthetic pre 2000 probably um, need to run conventional motor oil. They're just engines aren't designed for it. The seals aren't designed for it. Probably stick with a, a conventional. Unless the engine's been rebuilt with like new seals and various other things, stick with conventional more than likely. Second criteria, what are you doing with the car? If you're just daily driving it, you know, to work on a freeway, not really hard usage, um, it's not very hot, you're not towing anything, I keep saying car, but I mean car or truck, um, then you're probably fine if the car normally ran conventional motor oil, to stick with conventional motor oil. Um, you, you know, you're not really taxing it. Uh, if you're using the car hard, so you're using, you're doing uh, racing, you know, road racing, probably drag racing too, um, you know, you're, you're at high RPMs for long periods of times, uh, really pushing the car, you're in high temperatures, uh, you're, you're towing, you know, with like a truck, um, then, then I would gear it more towards synthetic, full synthetic. That would, you know, at that point you're gonna be using it, um, you know, the conventional oil might break down uh, more, you're gonna get better protection with the full synthetic. So for instance, uh, my, I have a few different cars. Uh, my 2008 uh, Honda Civic, that's what I commute to work with. I commute 30 to 40 miles a day, 45 miles a day uh, each way. Uh, I took it to the dealer because they only charged me $27. I couldn't buy oil and a filter for the same amount of price and then have to crawl underneath the car and dispose of all that. It was worth it for me to take it to the dealer at that point. It was literally $27 and like five cents. They're putting in conventional motor oil, just a conventional oil with uh, the Honda oil filter. Boom, all right, done skis. You know, I, no complaints there. The car has 210,000 miles, the engine runs like a champ. It's not leaking oil, it's not burning oil. Um, I'm gonna stick with, you know, sticking with conventional motor oil is just fine. Um, on the other hand, I have a 97 BMW that I take to the track and all that stuff. Even if I wasn't tracking the car, I would still run a full synthetic oil. The engine is just a little bit more of a higher performance engine. It, uh, um, and then it also has the, uh, the kind of the European formula, uh, oil formula. So, you know, Mobile One and I think Castro make a European um, oil formula for that. I stick to that just because I know that that engine is a little bit just more picky. It's a little higher compression. It runs a premium gas. It's just, you're getting more out of the engine. So in that case, I run full synthetic. I have a 2017 Ford F250. It has the 6.7 liter diesel in it. Um, I do a lot of towing. Uh, I have horses, I have, you know, the race cars, uh, or racing cars, not a lot, but, you know, uh, a lot of hauling, a lot of, you know, stuff like that. I run full synthetic in that. It may be fine to run conventional motor oil 
Um, you know, and in this particular case, let's say in the winter time, maybe you run uh, the conventional oil where you're just maybe driving around with the truck and not using it very hard. But in the summertime when it's hotter and there's more hauling, let's say you have the boats or whatever it is, then you're, you're going to be hauling a camper. Um, you know, maybe in the summertime, then you use a full synthetic oil, you know, and it doesn't hurt the engine to switch back and forth. The other time that comes to mind now is my wife had a 2008 Honda Fit and that thing had 220,000 miles on it. Uh, that thing would tick in the winter time. So I switched to a full synthetic in the winter uh, to a zero w, uh, W20 oil and um, to really help it with that uh, valve ticking. Uh, it wasn't really a tick, it was more you just, just loud valve train. Um, and so in that particular case, I found that yeah, the, the extra kind of lubricity of the oil uh, helped the engine, you know, in the extra cold temperatures here in Michigan, it can literally get down to negative 15 degrees. That's ambient air temperature. That's not wind chill and get negative 30. It doesn't happen all the time, but usually this in the wintertime, we normally dip down to at least zero degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty chilly. Um, so that is one time where I would kind of switch to a full synthetic in the winter time to help that car. And then in the summertime, it wasn't as big of a deal. I'd either go to a synthetic blend and, uh, and the car still ticking today. I don't, we don't have it right back. Uh, we give it to the, our in-laws and, uh, they use it to this day. So that car is a trooper. So then there's this middle category of synthetic blend. When would you use synthetic blend? Like I haven't touched on that. What is why the synthetic blend? Um, I find that I would use it. I actually tend to use it now on my Honda Civic when I change my own oil. And the reason I do that is for a few extra bucks. It's the high mileage engine, uh, oil formula. It, um, tends to be a synthetic blend. And so I do buy because I want to baby the car a little bit. I want the engine. Um, that's where an I buy, um, you know, something that's kind of a, the, the synthetic blend. I feel the oil companies, um, have tailored it oil specifically to higher mileage cars. Um, I kind of trust them. Maybe I shouldn't, I don't know, but, um, uh, I do believe that they're probably doing somewhat right by the car, you know, being a competitive company with competitors who are also targeting a similar market that getting a high mileage synthetic blend oil is probably not a bad idea. Uh, now diesel engines. Um, so, uh, there are a group of people, uh, Subaru people, so I'm going to name you, I'll call you out by name, uh, who'd like to use uh, diesel oil in their cars. So specifically the Shell Rotella T6, it's a full synthetic diesel oil. That's the Shell brand. Rotella is their diesel, I don't know, brand. The turbocharged engines tend to be a little bit harder on the oil. They, they, the, the oil is also used to lubricate and cool the turbo to a degree. Um, it goes into the bearing housing, and so uh, the Subaru people find that the, the Rotella T6, they just like the way it performs. Now, I don't know if they have any data to back that up, but uh, that's their thing, whatever. So that's the last criteria, um, you know, is like also turbocharged engines. Um, you know, do you, uh, you know, you might want to use uh, the full synthetic oil when you uh, turbo car. Again, I would still like, if you're just commuting with the car and it's uh, like a 1.5 liter turbo and it just has the turbo to help with a little bit of power, but it's mostly an economy car, you might be fine with con conventional motor oil. Again, uh, that case, check with the dealer first. And then if, it, uh, if they're using a conventional motor oil, you can stick with conventional motor oil. But if you're doing a high performance driving, especially with the turbo, full synthetic. Uh, diesels, um, again, they could go either way. My first, uh, inkling would be to check to see what the dealer normally or the car came with initially. And if you're not driving it hard, stick with that. Uh, if it's a conventional motor oil, but you drive it hard and it's a diesel, then go, maybe go to a full synthetic. Again, for my F250, I tend to run a full synthetic, but I also haul a lot. If I was just daily driving it, I believe that they would use a conventional motor oil in that truck. I would probably just stick with the conventional motor oil and not really worry about it too much. Or if we're haul only occasionally, we're not very far, we're not very heavy loads, you're not really straightening the engine, then the conventional motor oil, I'm sure is just fine. So I think that pretty much um, covers everything that I can think of, at least again, so this is just 
video is meant to be a primer. It's not meant to be, you know, the full, um, you know, guide to conventional versus synthetic versus synthetic blend. Um, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, comments, again, put them down in the comment section below. I'll try to get to them. And uh, uh, thanks for watching.